Thank you for being here. Guys, give Chris and Claudia a big round of applause. There's, I've been playing music in this town for 10 years and I've yet to find people like them, anyone that matches them and their love for music. Because without people like them, people like me don't really get to go very far. That's right, Mocha. That's right. This whole set is dedicated to Mocha. Um, I'm going to be releasing a album in April and I'm doing a string of um, house concerts like this to try to raise money to pay for PR to put it out. Um, so I really, really, really am so grateful for this. And if you would like to host a house concert, let me know. Um, I'm going to play some songs off that album. I don't feel very rock and roll sitting down and playing electric guitar, but I don't care anymore. <laughs> I promise I know how to tune a guitar. <laughs> I've neglected, I've been playing acoustic for a while, I've been neglecting this, so it's getting angry. Um, this first song is about the great state of California. Ooh, ooh. There's some Californians in the house. Nice. Oh, that's right. Um, there's a lot of people I know that have songs about California, and I wanted to write one, too. I went on this month-long tour by myself there when I turned 30. And I didn't really, I went up Highway 1, played a bunch of shows, and I didn't realize how different the terrain was throughout the state. This is my love song for California. Ooh, fire. It's finally fall, y'all. <laughs> Songs to my tongue is 
is torn As to the future I can take you still is all about uncomfortable truths, my uncomfortable truths specifically, so hoping that other people feel less alone in their own uncomfortable truths. And one of the, one of the uncomfortable truths is, hey buddy, is um, th this song is twofold. <laughs> one of them is talking about um, kind of how hard marriage can be if you don't really work on it. And I don't think a lot of people talk about that. You talk to people and they're like, things are great. They're really great. Um, which is usually a lie, you know? And, and the other part of this is um, the mental health aspect of it. Um, I don't know, it's another thing. I think it's a little more common now for people to talk about it, but I don't know. I'm on a bunch of medication for it. So I, I think that people should talk about that more because it's a, we don't have to be isolated in that kind of stuff. So, roundabout way of playing this song. <laughs> i 
fully married and thankful to be and live in a duality. As I'm in my head entertaining every other possibility. Out of this whole PA. Thank you. I love you. I'm not shocked anymore. He's literally saving my life every day. He did pretend to be shocked though earlier when I got scared. He was just being funny. Um, this is a one I don't play too often, but I've been trying to play it, and I love it. I haven't really thought up a good story about it yet. I don't think I'm going to get to make one up on the fly, so... <laughs>
believe we were sent to heal each other's pain. After all the sadness, this is the only thing I can explain. You have two choices, you can leave or stay. Until then I'm living in this limo, living on space. Fiona Apple, but I really, I don't sound like Fiona Apple, so on the album I was like, this is my Fiona Apple chance. <laughs> There's lots of weird, weird piano things on that one. Um, I do this thing once a month, I'm gonna, just to show you how nerdy I am, I'm in a, a songwriting group on Facebook that is called Translytic, and so we get a different poem every month that's in usually a language, I mean, not usually, always, in a language that you don't understand. So it could be German, it could be French, it could be whatever, any language that you don't know. And um, I think this one was some Scandinavian language, I can't remember. But basically, you have the poem here, and you go line by line, and whatever, let's say, there's something in Swedish on this line. Um, so I just, in my head, I'm like, oh, that sounds like dogs and peas and grass you know you just make it up like whatever the phonetics sound like in your head and you do that for every line and then you push the poem away and you've got that first draft that you just made up a bunch of random shit with and you start using that and then you go second draft and you go line for line and you kind of start piecing together i usually do about four or five drafts and so by the end you start getting like a really cool story or words going on um, and it's a great way to like get out of a your songwriting patterns that you do. Um, so this was one of those songs. I think it was from either a Swedish or a Danish poem, I can't remember. So it started as nonsense. And then it ended up about the Persephone myth. Does everyone know the Persephone myth? So Persephone lived, I'm gonna butcher this. Um, Persephone is very beautiful. She was like, the daughter of, I can't think of her name, but she's in charge of the seasons changing. And Zeus, the god of the underworld, was was like in love with Persephone. And so he like kidnapped her and took her to the underworld. Um, and her mother, whose name I cannot think of, I'm gonna think of it and tell you later, um, she became so sad because her daughter was gone and so the seasons just stopped happening and so people's crops started dying and, um, the whole world was just kind of going to shit, so she made a deal with Zeus to let um, Persephone come out every spring, and then as soon as winter came, um, she'd have to go back under for the rest of the year. So that sounds like a drag. It, it just very much, you know, plays into the misogyny <laughs> that we all live in today. Um, I'm gonna just play this song now. <laughs> Lanes curve dangerously Bleak and lake lights Wind rips right through me Knocks out all my Well, 
in West Texas for a summer um, and I saw this really cool art installation across the border in Oinaka I don't know how to say it Oinaka. I call it OJ I can't speak Spanish um, anyways so it was this really cool artist who had like 300 um, cast plaster hearts hanging from the ceiling off fishing twine and um, it was to represent the 300 women who had gone missing via the cartel. And it was pretty spooky and pretty pretty moving. And I go to the songwriters retreat every October. And the first time I went a couple years ago, you can kind of see like the mountains of Mexico or where it is in the desert, it's right on the border. And I was like, oh, I can finally avenge those women through a song now. And I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with this myth of La Loba, the wolf woman. And so she makes an appearance in a few songs of mine, but she's uh, the Avenger in this song. Close 
used to wonder this desert for all time Half a toll are coming Oh, bloodshed and all the crime All these borderlands Not quite human, not quite beyond the veil I am a smell of pure soul Stuck underneath your nails Go out, I go out To raise the bones from you Go out, I go out To march on the men who destroyed you talking about La Loba, the wolf woman. I'll just go into my other song about her. I was reading this book called The Women Who Run With the Wolves, which if you haven't read it, it's so amazing. Um, it's about the wild woman archetype through storytelling and, and mythology and legends. And it's written by a therapist whose name is also in Spanish that I can't pronounce, so I'm just not gonna do it. And um, oh, it's great. And La Loba is the wolf woman and she Lives in the, she lives in the forest and she collects the bones of dead wolves and she brings them all together and when she has enough for a full wolf, she sings and chants and brings her own wolf woman to life. And I love the idea of um, women being, bone upon, being born upon the bones of the women that came before them. Um, it's been a long day, sorry. Um, anyways, I love that idea. And then I was, I was co-writing with a girl from Denmark, and we were talking about how when we were growing up, and even as young adults, we were just told, like, stop being yourself. Like, stop being so much of yourself. Like, stop being so loud or so weird or so passionate or whatever. Just stop being too much. And we were like, that's a bullshit. Um, if we ever have daughters, we're going to let them be whatever they want to be. And... So this is La Loba, but it's also kind of our middle finger to everyone who said we were too much.